get started before it's uh, too late. So the second speaker is today, Nikita uh, Sumo, and he's going to talk about civility and Gandhiar Gandhiar Bank. Let's have a look. Thank you, Allah. Thank you for you, actually, for inviting me here and also for the organizers of organizing this nice uh, semester. <laughs> Uh, so I will talk about uh, this uh, memoir that has been, uh, been written in collaboration with Matteo Bonforte, Jean de Bois, and Bruno Nazare. So Jean de Bois introduced during COVID time this tradition of uh, putting pictures of us. So it's a nice tradition we probably keep it. Uh, so uh, these are very, these are very long papers. Uh, we call it a memoir. So it's basically a book that will appear in memoirs of the MS. And of course, you can find it online. So uh, it's about stability in Galliano Universal Birth and Crisis. So uh, first, uh, let me tell you what are functional inequalities, then what is the stability, and I will uh, talk a little bit in the second part about our proof, and in the third part about our birth and crisis. So maybe the best, uh, best uh, point to start is actually the sober birth so functional inequalities, what are they? So, uh, as you may know, well, the sublief inequality tells you that whenever you are in, R, in Rd, with D bigger than three, and your function has uh, the gradient in L2, then it controls uh, two, the two p-star norm. So here we, it's, it's, a, it's a notation that we use. Generally, we call it two star. So two star being two D, over D in minus two, we use uh, uh, a different notation. So for us, P star is D over D minus two. To be clear, why we use that one? Uh, but uh, just to just introduce, well, so this classical so of inequality. So whenever you have L2 con controllability of the gradient, you gain uh, something in the LP controllability. So you, your function is L. L to be star interval in this notation. Um, so for the sobolev inequality, we know the optimal constant and what are the optimizers. So for optimizer, I, I say, uh, I call an optimizer a function which makes this inequality being an equality. And for this inequality in particular, these functions have been computed by Oben and Talenti and by Rodemich in a in a basically forgotten paper uh, for which he uh, basically has no credit nowadays, but actually he was the first guy to understand that uh, the function which realized the equality here are what we call nowadays orbital into function and uh, have this particular shape. So they have a fact they polynomial they increase at infinity with this power. Now, of course, the inequality is invariant by translations, uh, multiplication by constants, and uh, scaling. So if we start from this function here, we can construct an entire manifold of uh, optimal functions. Okay. Um, now, what is, what is stability of functional inequalities? Well, this is a, a question which was raised by Brzezinski in 19, 1985, which goes like this. Suppose uh, that you take the difference between the two terms of the inequality. So the gradient here minus optimal constants and the L2 star. Can you prove that this, what we call the deficit functional, controls uh, a distance to the manifold of the optimal functions? Uh, in, another, in another, we can say it in another way, suppose that for a function f, delta, delta s of f is small, then can you, say, can you prove quantitatively that f is close to an orbital function. Um, in, in their original paper, they, they, they obtain this kind of a result for, for uh, the uh, uh, sobolev inequality between domains. And to have an entire proof or complete proof uh, for the stability question for the sobolev inequality, you need to wait until 1991. Which a uh, paper from by Bianca and Nell appeared, in which they basically prove that this question has a positive answer. They prove basically that the deficit controls this kind of distance. So, uh, deficit of f controls the infimum among 
all the all the uh, family of augmentality function uh, of delta uh, gradient of f minus gradient of g where g is a augmentality function. Now uh, this was the very first result about these kind of questions. Uh, it was uh, obtained by a very new technique for the time, uh, but it was a non constructive result. And uh, this means that basically this constant is not known. Uh, and the, let's say we don't know if there, there exists uh, a function which actually realizes this thing. Uh, so we will be mostly interested in obtaining constructive result and understanding which is the function that exercises this kind of thing. Um, of course, uh, that was the one of the first results. Then 20 or 30 years passed, and we obtained different results. For instance, the first one by Chanky, Fusco, Magic, Bartelli, 2009, and Figali, Magic, Bartelli, 2013, which they obtained one of the first somehow more constructive results. Because uh, this kind of the result that obtained is based on um, uh, basically uh, geometric measure theory. They use geometric measure theory techniques. And another result, which is uh, this is probably is, uh, he, he, in this kind of result here, they, they, they obtain a, a different reminder term, let's say. Uh, but also, this, this reminder term is also not completely explicit. And the first result in which you obtain really a constructive uh, constant and a uh, constructive way of proving this, uh, this stability was done by uh, Dugo and Jacques Jacques in 2009, in which they proved this, uh, that the deficit follows some of control of this kind of uh, reminder term, let's say, uh, which is actually very, very weak. If you want this kind of uh, H minus one distance. Uh, of course, for, for the stability result of the Sobolev and equality have different uh, a lot of people now working on the problem have different results. This, there is one very, very nice by Figali and Rui Azan, which, which they uh, basically prove stability for the LP software inequality. Uh, now it's published in this paper. But uh, the problem of the constructive estimates and let's say constructive constants, like explicit constants here, is uh, basically still open for a lot of inequalities. Uh, now here we have just some uh, some of the literature uh, about stability of family of uh, inequalities. Of course, now it is a huge business. Let's say have different different versions of the sober inequality, so a fractional version of the sober inequality, hardly log sober inequality, sorry, hardly little sober log sober have uh, sober inequality on manifolds so on this of this. It's, a, it's beginning to be a very huge field. Um, now, what we are interested in is to actually uh, understand the question of stability in a particular family of Gagliardo Somolev inequalities. So, Gagliardo Nirenberg inequalities are something that you can obtain by Sobol from Sobolev by interpolation. So, instead of controlling the chupi star norm here on the right, you control a chupi norm. Where p is between one and p star, remember p star is this here, and you can uh, control this guy by the gradient of f in L two and f in p plus one. Of course, by uh, homogeneity reason, you need uh, an exponent delta theta here and one minus theta here. Well, theta is uh, can be computed by scale. Basically. Now, uh, as far as I know, this is the, the only family of Galliano Nierberg inequalities for which we know. The optimal constants and the optimizers. So apart from Sobolev and let's say very different version of Sobolev, Galliano Nirmark inequalities are really less understood with respect to Sobolev in these kind of steps. And uh, for this particular family in which you have 2p on the right and p plus one on the left, uh, you have a, a result of the pin of the ball in 2002, which says you basically that the um, um, Optimizers of this inequality are again obey talenti type functions, which can be written like this, in which the uh, decay exponent is a little bit different, depends on B, but basically is the same open talenti. And of course, uh, here again, you can consult the entire manifold of 
uh, these optimizers. Uh, now, what we actually wanted to understand in our bar is to, uh, is to understand how we can prove a stability result for these family of inequalities. And can we do it uh, in a constructive way? So here, uh, we were not the first one to analyze this case. We have uh, several, several papers in particular, first, probably the uh, first one and one of the most interesting probably is this one by Figali Carlin, which uh, they analyze, they, they study this kind of uh, inequality in dimension two, and they obtain a stability result by using a Sobolev inequality dimension four. So they link a Sobolev inequality dimension four to a family of Galeano inequality dimension two. So kind of dimension reduction. And they, the second interesting thing is that actually they apply their results to um, Keller signal model to understand how, how is the law. Um, so why we are interested in this, basically? So from my point of view, I'm doing basically PDEs and uh, you know, let's say diffusion PDEs or let's say heat equation or nonlinear equation of heat equation or generally e equation like this. So you have derivative in time, an diffusion operator acting on a nonlinearity and with eventually an external rotation. Now, for this kind of, of, of equation, what we know is that generally using, for instance, entropy methods, you, you know that functional inequalities or optimal functional inequalities gives you rate of convergence towards the equilibrium. And if you have an optimal functional inequality, so basically when you know the optimal constant, you can get an optimal rate of convergence. Now, the stability. Uh, is something even better because if you have a stability for a functional inequality, at least for I know a smaller set of of, of function, then for that set of function we can prove improve the rate of convergence. Now what we this is somehow this is not exactly an equivalence, but this is more or less known. But what we discovered is that actually you can do also the opposite. Is that that if you have an equation for which you can compute improved rate of convergence. And uh, you have a functional inequality associated to that equation, then you can actually prove stability for the functional inequality. And this is what we will use in our in our in our Now, oh, this is actually the, the picture of why stability is important for us. Now, uh, okay. Probably I can probably give you just a glimpse of the result and then the proof. Uh, so uh, in, in order to prove the stability of the, those kinds of families of, of functional inequalities, we will uh, change a little bit the, the deficit functional. Instead of having, I probably can write here, instead of having something like this, okay. Okay. Uh, is this, sorry. <laughs> Instead of having something like this, so in a in a it's just if you push the black hole up, it 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 fixes it. So if you push it down, it will come back. Oh okay. Okay, well, okay, I will leave that. <laughs> Sorry. So instead of writing in this uh, multiplicative form, we're basically writing, oh, I, I went too far, in this additive form. Uh, but, uh, you know, this, this, this uh, inequality is scale invariant, but this one is not scale invariant. No. But uh, the, inter the, um, let's say the interesting thing is that actually this form of the inequality, and if you want this one, is they are completely equivalent. And to pass from one to another, basically, uh, you rescale your function in order to, uh, let's say, you, you take this non scale invariant functional and you apply it to this function f lambda, uh, rescale like this. This scaling fixes the L2P norm, but it uh, gives you uh, a parameter lambda here with a power alpha and here power minus beta, with alpha and beta are positive, and you optimize lambda, and then you get again this. This is uh, a uh, multiplicative form. Okay. So basically, obtaining a, uh, 
Uh, the stability result for this functional is almost the same as obtaining the stability result for this one. Now, there are some uh, interesting things is that not all the optimizers for this inequality has also optimizers for this one. Uh, this is something we'll actually use later, uh, but something that, uh, let's say, it, it, plays, it plays well without it. Um, now, instead of using uh, that kind of formulation, I will introduce a formulation which is completely equivalent, but is related to our method. So I will introduce a relative entropy functional, which is basically a kind of uh, a Taylor expansion of the, fun the, 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 the norm of f to the power of p plus p plus one around the augmented entity profile. Mm -hmm. So you can do this. And you can think of about this relative entropy as you know a kind of distance between the, your function f and the and the augmented profile. And actually, this relative entropy controls the distance by the exceder quality. And then we'll introduce another another uh, function here, which is the relative Fisher information or just Fisher information, uh, which is basically a different way of uh, looking at the gradient effect. Now you, you take the gradient of f, but you take also the gradient of t into account. And now there is a miracle that happens. Actually, if you if you take i, so relative official information minus four f, what you are left is exactly with the uh, non-scaling deficit that I introduced before. Okay. Uh, like it seems really magic, but actually there is something which which uh, goes on here. Uh, whenever I introduce this, you know, this function, I'm implicitly introducing the second moment of my function f and my function t. You see, here g one to power one minus one is basically the second one plus second plus x squared. So here I'm taking to account the second moment. But as well here, because gradient of g to power one minus p is basically x, x. So whenever I, I develop this square, I also have a second moment. And uh, Whenever I take the difference of the two, the second moment actually disappear, and for uh, because of that, I have basically my my uh, deficit function. Which I introduced before. So uh, our result goes like this. So if we take any d bigger than one p uh, between one and p star, I will exclude it. P star excluded. I will comment on it later. Then what we can prove is that. For a, for a set of functions, which are defined by these properties, we can prove that our, our uh, non-scaling variant form of the deficit controls the entropy with a constant, which basically is explicit and depends only on this parameter. Now, um, if you want, this is kind of, of uh, stability result because as I told you before, the relative entropy controls the distance between the function f and the function g. It's a, in this case, it will be a two big distance. So basically, this tells you that the, the deficit controls an L2 p distance between f and g. Um, now, what about this, the, the, this hypothesis here? Now, uh, these two hypotheses here, they are just needed to, let's say, uh, fix the right mental entity function to which we put we, our distance. So these, these two hypotheses are in order to fix the profile. This one actually is, is a bit more subtle because it's an hypothesis which um, came out from our two methods. So we, we will use a nonlinear flow to prove this theorem. And uh, uh, basically, it's an hypothesis that we need to, to use the tool, let's say. Um, we don't know if this is uh, necessary, but uh, we know that something like this uh, and at least a control of the second moments to prove a result in this, this setting is needed. Because, well, uh, you have a nice counterexample here. Let's say that you take uh, a family of function uh, fk to the powers of p, which are basically unmental entity function centered, and two mental entity function which goes to infinity, uh, you translate them infinity, and you try to understand that whether you can obtain a, a stability result, what you you know it's basically that the deficit function goes to zero, but the entropy goes to plus infinity. 
And what save us in our result is that the entropy over this uh, weird uh, way to control the tails of the function, if, still goes to zero. So still our theorem is true because in this constant c, you have basically this, this parameter. Now, whenever you obtain a, a result like this, actually you can obtain several things here. You can obtain, as I told you, the deep there, uh, a stability result in GP, a stability result in, for the gradients, and also a stability result for the uh, se uh, second moment of the difference. So it's, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it seems weak, but actually it's not. Uh, so, uh, as I told you before, well, from that kind of formulation, of a non scaling variant, you can play some tricks and obtain a formulation for a scale, uh, scale invariant version of the inequality. And here you have a, a reminder term, uh, which is a little bit terrible because it depends on how you scale the function. But basically, uh, it, it works as before, it says that the deficit controls a distance to the manifold of the dominant functions. Okay. So uh, now to present the result, I can give you a slight, say, a clip of the proof. Uh, so, as I told you, uh, this is really related to rate of convergence for for uh, nonlinear equations. Linear diffusion functions. But actually, our idea or our philosophy is actually the following one. We, we, we basically study an equation, uh, which I'll, I, will, uh, I will show you later, and we obtain an improved rate of convergence for certain data on that equation, and we use that improved rate of convergence to obtain the stability results from the function. Okay. Now, what is the equation that we use is what is called fast diffusion flow. So it's a nonlinear equation. Um, dTU equal a Bastion to the power m. m here is assumed to be less than one and bigger than this uh, parameter here. So, uh, and for like say for simplicity here, you can take uh, u naught, which is non negative, for instance. So, this is a, this is a very known, this is a known equation, it's called fast diffusion equation. Uh, we know quite a lot about this equation in this range of parameters, at least. So we know that uh, if if your solution if your initial data is in L1, solution will be in L1, they conserve mass this way, they, and they will conserve the, the center of mass as well. And solution are, will be C infinity. This was uh, already done by Herrero in 85. Now, one interesting thing is that um, this equation admits um, a family of self-similar solutions. Uh, which are written in this, they are generally called Barbara solution or Barbara battle solutions. And uh, basically, you can find the solution by scaling in time with this law, a uh, stationary profile, Vm, uh, which is written here. Now, the letter M is, is the mass. Okay, so basically, uh, the idea is this, this Barbara profile captures the asymptotic, uh, asymptotic regime of any L1 solution and the, and the um, Asymptotic regime will depend on the mass. So if you have uh, an initial datum of mass m, then the solution will say we call it relax to the similarity for, for a similar, with a certain similar profile with the same mass m. Okay. The mass here is the L1 norm or L1 norm. L1 norm. L1 norm. So uh, it's, you, inter you integrate this guy and you will have m. Okay. Uh, now, uh, well, if, if you want to know something about something more about this equation, you probably should go to the book of Vasquez, on this Vasquez. He wrote two books about post median first efficient equation of 2006 and 2007. Uh, now, um, you see this, this profile actually here, the barn blood profile is basically, uh, again, a fat tail. So it's a non-vectometric profile with probably a different power, but it's basically a non profile. Now, uh, in order to Let's say have a better or simpler way of, 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 uh, of solving this problem. We'll just scale this equation to a kind of Fokker plot equation, nonlinear Fokker plot 
application. But this is just a scaling uh, in space time, let's say, and you can pass from this one to this one. It's, it's, it's really easy. But the, the, uh, the advantage of doing this is now the baron profile is a stationary profile. So it's basically, again, an unplanned function here. And uh, what we know about this Fokker type uh, uh, equation is that it admits uh, entropy or relative entropy, uh, which is, can be written like this. And you again see basically uh, that you take your solution V, to, and uh, the entropy is just de developing V to the power M around the bar. Now, uh, whenever uh, you de derive this. Uh, uh, entropy in time with respect whenever V is uh, a solution of dissipation, we find the derivative of the entropy is what we call the Fisher information again, which has again basically the same uh, the same uh, uh, the same expression as the Fisher information that we before. And uh, uh, okay, forget about this slide. It's just uh, to say that basically it is a gradient flow with respect to the entropy. It's not really important right now, uh, but what we know basically is that uh, in, this, in this language, we can rewrite our, um, uh, our uh, non-scaling variant deficit functional in terms, of, uh, in terms of V, where V is our function F to the power of V. So let's say I take a function F, define it in my space, for which I know that this is positive, uh, and then use this kind of variable where p and m are defined by this, this relation, then I can rewrite this uh, nonlinear functional in terms of the uh, Fisher information and the uh, entropy that I used before. Now, why I'm doing so? Because if I take a solution to this nonlinear Fokker product equation and then derive this term in time, well, I, I discovered this is a decrease. Okay? So basically, what, what we are doing here is choosing a nonlinear equation, which makes my, uh, my uh, deficit uh, decreasing along the flow. And actually, the deficit will converge to zero, because my flow will converge to the right mental energy function, but it will converge to the manifold. Okay. Now, in our goal, in, the, in our approach, is obtaining, obtaining that the Fission information. So we, we know that fission information controls four times the, the entropy. So we know that this guy is zero. I mean, it's bigger than zero. And what we want to obtain in our in our proof is that it controls not only four times the, the the entropy, but controls four times plus something. And this plus something actually is it's something that will will give us the the stability. Uh, now, why do we believe that this will work? Now, we believe this because whenever, because we know that if we try to linearize our Fisher information, our entropy around these variable profiles or these event energy profile, um, you discover that the linearized quantity, which I call here uh, this F and this I, F of G and I of G, uh, satisfy a um, kind of Poincare inequality, but is better that the previous, um, uh, the previous Fisher, inform uh, Fisher information controls the entropy. Because here you have that in this Poincare inequality, the linearized Fisher information controls for alpha the uh, linearized entropy. But alpha here is slightly bigger than one. So basically, by, by doing this trick, uh, you know that at least at infinity, if you wait a nice time, you can improve your. Uh, your initial uh, inequality by this one. So basically, you can you can you can hope at least that instead of having four, you can have four plus eta. Let's say. Now, but to do this, this is basically how risky. But to do is uh, in a, in a completely clean way. Well, we can do that. But what we need to understand, like we can do it under the, the hypothesis that our solution V is trapped. Between two variables profile, basically in this way, and actually this kind of control is is uh, very strong because it's a uh, it's how uh, I mean it's the same as writing that your solution 
over the bar of phi minus one in L infinity less this epsilon, okay, for a given epsilon. Now, it is a Fokker, it is a nonlinear Fokker Planck equation that we use, but if you try to do for, for the linear Fokker Planck, this, this kind of estimates, uh, they are just false because your barometer will be uh, kind of exponential, Gaussian, and uh, well, it's very hard to control something, let's say, very hard to control something like V over Gaussian. Is like sorry, V multiplied by E to the power E square over two. And at infinity, well, this can do anything. Well, here, what is interesting is that at the bar blood of five has a fat tail. And if we can prove that our function here V has the same fat tail, then fat tail or fat tail can be controllable, which is very which is much easier than exponential over exponential Gaussian. Try, try, try to do computation this one. So. Um, now, basically, this slide uh, tells us that whenever we can find a control like this, then we can improve uh, our quotient e over e of v over f of v. Now, when we have improved our quotient, what we do is to uh, take use of this with this differential inequality and say that. If we improve our quotient at a certain time t uh, with, with, with by a factor eta, then we can come back and say that for any time our quotient was already improved by something which depends on eta and the time t at which we improved it. So basically, what we need to, to understand is what is this time t at which we can improve this uh, our, our inequality, and what is the eta in order to have a completely constructed result. Now, in order to do so, uh, we uh, what we can do is okay. First, we chose this epsilon, on which we can have this control. We compute this time, which we call the star of side, also this big time t. We obtain a, this asymptotic time layer, on which we obtain an improvement, and then by these backward estimates, we can obtain them to up to the initial data. And if we obtain the improvement of the initial data, we are we are done because it is. This is the stability result for initial data, not for the solution. Uh, now, and here is where uh, the hypothesis on the tail control comes in. Because uh, what, uh, what I, I mean, uh, I've proved with, in my thesis with Matteo Monforte is that uh, for this kind of equation, uh, you can actually prove a control like this. But what you need, you, you need to ask is that your tail behavior of the initial datum uh, have this behavior. Now, probably I should explain this now. Look here, what I'm, what I'm uh, looking at is the, in, the integral of the initial datum outside a big ball. And I move it with there, the radius of big ball. And I want that this guy, when it go, goes to Z, when air goes to infinity, it goes to zero with this power here. Now, when I have this, this is basically a, uh, a weak way to say that my tail, the tail of the initial datum, is as the tail of the variable profile. Okay. Um, the interesting thing that is that uh, this is a different of link to this. So that means that I can have a, this kind of control, so I can converse the variable profile with this kind of n infinity control, if and only if my initial datum was here. Which is again, uh, if you take the, the linear kind of um, focal point equation, this is not known, or if you want, it is known to be false. So this is really a nonlinear flow which plays the game. Now, in doing it in, uh, in, um, in, in my thesis, we understood that this was the right hypothesis that we needed. What we did in the, in the memoir is actually to compute explicitly the, at the, the, let's say, the first time on an estimate of the time at which we can have this, this kind of precise control. And this depends on several parameters. Uh, uh, first of the epsilon here uh, on the this control of the tail and on initial entry. Okay. Uh, so basically, uh, the theorem like goes like this: we choose our epsilon, we 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 compute our t. We know that we have this asymptotic time layer. We know that we have our improved inequality, and then after this we go. 
to our initial time layer and uh, prove the improvement in quality up to time zero. And when we've done that, we obtain a stability result for the initial time, so for the initial time. Now, this basically proves the theorem up to P star, so up to this guy, but excluded. And, uh, and now let me just briefly comment on why we have to exclude it first and why we say this P star is this. And the P-star case is the case of the subgraph inequality, and why the subgraph inequality is so okay. Now, uh, with respect to, uh, let's, let's come back again now to the deficit functional. Now, here is the deficit, the scale invariant to, of the deficit functional for the Galliardo-Nier family. No? And uh, for, from this one, you can pass to the no scale invariant. Okay? But this, this operation, it's not something that you can do for the Sobolev, basically, because in the Sobolev, well, uh, you, the Sobolev is scaling by, but it's also the right way of exp uh, expressing this inequality in terms of fission information and relative entropy. So basically, the, the, the thing here is that when we pass from the scale in, invariant to the scale, the non scale invariant, we lose some. Of the, of the optimizers. And here we cannot lose some of the optimizers. We have to, to consider them all. Uh, basically, in terms of flow, that uh, uh, boils down to consider a flow which has to conserve mass, center of mass, and second moment. But our equations are diffusion equations. So they can conserve mass. Sometimes they can conserve the center of mass. But since they diffuse, so you have a lot of mass which goes to infinity, there's no way that you conserve your second moment. And because of this, we are not able to use exactly the same flow for the solid inequality. But, uh, okay, this is just the theorem for the solution. We, we can use still something. And this something is a kind of modified flow. So we use our nonlinear flow. Okay, maybe I can probably choose. So we use this our nonlinear flow, and then we escape it again in order to have a flow which conserves the second moment. Now, in doing that, we are able to basically do all the all the proof again and obtain this theorem, in which we can control the uh, we, can, we can prove the stability of the subgraph inequality. But here, you see the hypothesis. Of, of course, we are again in this hypothesis of. of controlling the tails, but here, what you see is that uh, the function f has to have the same uh, let's say mass, center of mass, and second moment, but the initial second moment, of the momentum entropy file. Now, uh, but the interesting thing is this, these are the, the right hypothesis, because in this, in this inequality, the second moment enters as well, because it's, it's already in the scale invariant form. So somehow it's something that we should expect. Okay. Now, but doing this kind of rescaling uh, gives you a flow which is not exactly, which is not explicit, let's say, because it has this nonlinear and non-local term, which makes you to conserve the second moment. And this is what basically um, gives you a lot of trouble with this. But in the end, the, most of the proof can go through, and you have to do some, some estimates to control this non local term. Basically, the theorem. So, with this, probably stop. Thank you. Yeah. So, when you have this improvement on rate field classification equation, is this really like a, a gain in the exponential rate of all yeah. types? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. If you if you start from uh, if you start from so generally for the fast diffusion uh, for the fast diffusion uh, equation, what you know is that uh, okay, this is positive, right? So what you have is that whenever you derive your entropy. You have a, a derivative of the entropy is minus the fission information. You know that fission penetration controls four times the entropy, 
So in the end, you use ground wall and you, and you see the entropy decays as e to minus 40. Okay, this is standard. Well, but when you are in, let's say, in this hypothesis, uh, what you can prove is that basically at a certain point you have a, an improved, uh, an improved, uh, you uh, yeah. yes, exactly. In, in, in that case, you have an improved uh, uh, entropy feature information inequality, and that inequality gives you four plus something. And this something can be, can be, uh, can be explicitly computed. But if you know that you are in that regime, you can even go back, go back and say that since the beginning, you were four plus something. Yeah. Yeah, because this so uh, this is because basically you have this computation here. This is a very it's a terrible computation. I, I skip all these days, but basically, if you take the the quotient between the fission information and the uh, their relative entropy, you take the derivative along the flow, what you discover is that the derivative of this quotient is less or equal than q, q minus four, okay? And then you can integrate back this uh, differential inequality. If you assume that at time big T, you have this improve, improvement oh, four oh, plus oh, eta, see. you integrate it back, and then you obtain this, see? Okay, the, the real problem is to obtain this. Right. Okay, and uh, you can obtain this because uh, you have this uh, Bakri-Emery computation. Not only the the uh, it's not only that the entropy goes to zero, but also the derivative the is derivative, so the fission formation decreases. Session 47 next week. Next week, so next week, the last session 47.